What's up, everybody? Um, had something on my mind for a few days now, and I've really been planning to share it, but to be honest, just haven't really had a lot of time. But I really didn't want to put it off a lot longer because I felt like to do so would kind of be disobedience or, um, you know, sort of throwing away something that the Lord had shared with me. But at any rate, I wanted to do that now. Um, it all started a few days ago when I was thinking about some things that I've been seeing in the news and some articles that I've been reading online and, you know, just stuff that's going on in the world. Um, and it's stuff that, you know, to be honest, those things affect all of us in some way. And I don't really want to go into all of those things because I don't want to deal with those particular issues right now. It's more or less the overall concept that I felt like the Lord was sharing with me and really placed on my heart to share with you guys too. Um, I am not a prophet, uh, so it's not my specific job to uh, deal with particular issues the way that some would do. I'm more of a teacher, evangelist. I like to lead people to Christ and let them know him through his goodness and through his word. So those are really the, the things that kind of capture my heart and the things that I like to share. So I've not been doing a great job of that lately because we have been so busy. And um, as you can see today, I'm not even really super prepared. No makeup, red face, nappy hair. Going to take care of that later today. But I just really wanted to get this out there while it was still fresh in my heart. And I've asked the Lord to help me discipline my time um, to start getting these things out there when he starts showing them to me. Um, but anyway, I was thinking a few days ago about these issues and how these issues in society affect us today and what it means for us and what it looks like and how it's changing things and really to how they break my heart. And I know that it's not just my heart they break. They break a lot of people's hearts, people who love the Lord and who love people and they want to see some things change. Um, and it really made me think about how we are supposed to be in this world, but not of it. Sometimes that's hard for people to understand. Um, it's hard to kind of grasp and, and figure out, you know, what exactly does that look like? Or what exactly does that mean? And it really led me back to this passage. It just kept going through my head over and over. And it was the conversation that Jesus had with his disciples um, not long before he was crucified. And he made the statement, uh, and I'm going to read it, so I'm going to look down from time to time because I've got some verses open here and some notes that I really met, wanted to make sure I didn't miss. But um, it was in John chapter 14, verse 30, and Jesus said, I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming, and he has nothing in me. Um, so that made me start thinking, and when I start thinking, I kind of, meditating on a particular scripture I look at it in different versions and translations and I liked how the New Living Translation said it as well the New Living says this I don't have much more time to talk with you because the ruler of this world approaches he has no power over me and I spent some time studying the chapter more because you know, whenever you read a verse in the Bible, it's not just about that verse. It's about everything that happened before it, after it, all around it, in the context, and in the context of the conversation. So, I started studying the whole chapter, reading back through it, as I meditated on that verse. Um, you know, that's really what we want, right? You know, we don't, we don't want the ruler of this world to have anything in us. We certainly don't want him to have any power over us. And it seems like more and more I'm seeing people that um, I never thought would fall. And sometimes that includes me myself. You know, um, we thought that we would never uh, see certain struggles. But we're human. And what we have to understand is that we are in a fallen world. So we are in this world but we are not of it. We're of a different world. Well, what does that look like? You know, that's the big question. Okay, I get it. But what does that look like? Well, so I, I spent some time thinking about that too. And it really came down to this. 
It means us looking like Jesus, Jesus looking like the Father, right? It really is kind of that simple. And when you go back and you look at the rest of that chapter, um, going to kind of hit a few scriptures that were before that one because I do have a point I'm going to kind of wrap up with here in just a minute, but these kind of lead to us. I don't want to miss any of the steps, you know, we got to get there. But in this entire chapter, like I said, he's talking with his disciples and, you know, he has said that um, he's going to prepare a place for his followers. And Thomas said, well, you know, we don't really know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And that's when he said the famous quote that a lot of people know this verse, you know, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Um, no one comes to the Father except through me. So we're all familiar with that, but again, what does that look like? And so he goes on to say, if you had known me, you would have known my Father. And from now on, you do know him, and you have seen him, meaning that you know, when you see Jesus, you see the Father and vice versa. So Philip, Philip then says, show us the Father. And Jesus, you know, he's patient and kind. But in this moment, he's like, have I been with you so long? And yet you still don't get it, Phil. You know, that's really what this conversation was like. He said, he who has seen the Father or who has seen me has seen the Father. And that kind of led on into the next thing, which is where he says that, you know, when he goes away, he's going to send another helper. He's going to send a comforter. Um, and of course, I'm sort of jumping around a little bit here, but that's basically what he's saying. He says that whoever dwells in him will do greater works than he has done. And I don't know about you guys, but that blows my mind sometime thinking about how Jesus has said that we, because we're a part of his followers, has said that we can do greater works than he did. I, that's just hard for me to wrap my brain around, right? And I'm guessing maybe you guys feel that way. I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one that feels like that, but I don't think so. Okay? So he says that he who believes in me the works that I do, he will do also. So whatever Jesus did, we do if we believe. And what did Jesus do? What the Father said to do. He believed the Father, so he did what the Father said. And we believe Jesus, so we're supposed to do what he says. Okay, and he says, whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So whenever we do a greater work, than Jesus did, if we can even wrap our brain around the thought that Jesus said we would do greater works. We're glorifying the Father. We're glorifying the Son. It's all for their glory. It's for His glory. And it's at this point, you know, because they're wondering, and, and rightfully so, but how can I possibly do what we've seen you do, Lord? You know, and in today's world, how can we possibly do what Jesus did all those thousands of years ago. And it is because he sent that helper. He sent the comforter. And he says, the spirit of the truth. Let me back up. I'm in verse 16, by the way. Still in chapter 14. He says, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. So we don't have to do it alone. He's a helper. That he may abide with you forever. Not for a little while. Not once in a while not on an emergency standby forever. That means all the time. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Okay. I want to park right there for a minute and just kind of go back to what I was saying about, you know, the issues in our society that break my heart. Um, they're completely against scriptural standards, and I won't talk about that today either, but um, just those things. And so many times we sit back and we think, but why don't they get it? They, meaning, of course, people who don't believe or who don't have a problem with some of the things that we see in the world today. And this scripture, verse 17, says it. 
the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. So people who have not professed, you know, that Jesus is Lord over their life, they don't submit to his lordship. It's not really just that they're being rebellious all by themselves, although that is true, but they're not being all rebellious by themselves. Um, it's not that, what it really comes down to is this, the world which they're in, remember we're in the world but not of it, they're actually of it as well. They can't receive the truth. It says the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. So that puts a real mandate on our lives, doesn't it? If we think about it in those terms, what it really comes down to is we have to look like Jesus and do what he did, even the uncomfortable things, so that the world will see. That's how people began to receive Christ, was by seeing what he did, the works that he did. And in these dark times, it's going to take greater works to get people to see the truth, to open their eyes. And again, we don't have to do it alone. We have the Holy Spirit, the helper. He goes on to say that if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. I had several conversations lately about a particular topic. And again, not going into the details, maybe read between the lines. I don't know. Don't care. But at any rate, um, they say, but, but they love the Lord, but they do this. Okay, well, Jesus said in John 14, chapter 23, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. So, what exactly does that mean? That means that if, you know, we hear people say, oh, but, but I love the Lord. Sorry, Alexa's going off in the background. But if we love the Lord, we will keep his word. Bottom line. If we don't love him, we don't keep his word. So if we see someone who's not keeping his word, their actions speak. And we know exactly what's really going on. It's a lack of love for the Lord. He tells us that he gives us his peace. And now I'm coming down to the final thing that I want to share. And it's kind of lunchtime, so I'm going to wrap this up quickly. Tim is taking a break, so I'll go to lunch here in a second. But this is what I wanted to say. It all comes down to that verse 30. And this is the part that really jumped at me. He says, I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me. So I kept feeling like there was more to that. And when I opened it up and started looking at the meanings behind the words and I saw that, that phrase, he has, something about that just triggered for me and I started looking at it in the original language and here's what just blew my world. It was amazing. In the original language where it says, he has nothing, or he hath, in the King James Version, he hath nothing. That word in the original language is the word echo. It's the word echo. And when I saw that, I'm telling you, I just wanted to shout. I started to like pace through the house. I was so excited just thinking about it, mulling over it, thinking about it. Um, but the word echo, he has, he echoes nothing in me. The enemy of this world echoes nothing in us. But then that made me start thinking about what he had said just a few verses prior, where he said, I am in you and you are in me. He has us. We have him. We are echoes of Jesus. Jesus is an echo of the Father. And every time we do something in his name that is genuinely, legitimately 
led by the Holy Spirit in his name, we are echoing the grace that he shared all those years ago and the promises that he shared. And so that, my friends, is what I wanted to share with you today. You're not living in this time on the earth by chance. It's not an accident. You're here because you're an echo of Jesus. And the sound wave of your life, the impact, you know what sound waves look like and how, like if you drop a rock in the water, how the waves go out. You're that in the kingdom of God. You're a ripple in the kingdom of God. We all are. And we are duplicates that are resounding out from the cross all those years ago. We're an echo of Jesus. I just really want you to keep that in mind as you go through this weekend and through this week. Um, never take your stance for granted. You have power in you that you may not even realize. So make sure to be that echo in your community, your job, your home, whatever. Be that echo because just like Jesus changed the world all those years ago because of his father, we have the power to change the world by just being an echo like he told us to be. All right, y'all. Have a good day.